Uh, we're going to read two five-minute Frozen stories here. I'm going to start from the very beginning. And I don't know who it's written by. That's okay. All right. The kingdom of Arendelle was a happy place. The king and queen had two young daughters, Anna and Elsa. The girls were their pride and joy, but the family had a secret. Elsa could create ice and snow out of thin air. One night, Anna convinced Elsa to turn the ballroom into a winter wonderland. And as the sisters happily played together, Elsa accidentally lost control of her magic. An icy blast hit Anna's head, and she fell to the floor, unconscious. unconscious. The king and queen rushed the girls to the trolls, mysterious healers who knew about magic. A wise troll named Grand Pappy saved Anna by removing her memories of Elsa's magic. He explained that she was lucky to have been hit in the head, not in the heart. The troll told the queen and king that Elsa's powers would only grow stronger. Fear will be her enemy, he warned. The king and queen knew they had to protect their daughter to keep her magic a secret. They closed the castle gates, and King gave Elsa gloves to contain her powers. But she was still afraid she might hurt someone. She even avoided Anna to keep her safe. Then, when Anna and Elsa were teenagers, their parents were lost at sea. The sisters had never felt more alone. Elsa stayed inside where she could hide her magic. But... She could not keep the castle gates closed forever. On the day of her coronation, her subjects were invited inside to celebrate. Anna was thrilled at the chance to meet new people. She had barely stepped outside when she met Prince Hans of the Southern Isles. The two instantly fell in love. At the coronation ball, Prince Hans asked Anna to marry him. Anna said yes, and the couple went to ask Elsa for her blessing. Elsa refused to bless the marriage. She couldn't let Anna marry a man she had just met. Anna couldn't believe her sister. Why do you shut me out? What are you so afraid of? She cried. As Elsa fought with her sister, she lost control of her magic. Ice seemed to shoot out of her hands. Now all of Arendelle knew her secret. Panicked, Elsa fled into the mountains. With her secret out, Elsa let her powers loose. A storm raged around her as she created an ice palace and even changed the way she looked. Below her, ice and snow covered Arendelle. Anna felt awful. Leaving Hans in charge, she went after her sister. As Anna trekked through the forest, she lost her horse. Luckily, she met an ice harvester named Kristoff and his reindeer, Sven. The two agreed to help find Elsa. High in the mountains, Anna and Kristoff came across a dazzling winter wonderland where they met a living Snowloff. Hi, I'm Olaf, he said. Anna realized that Elsa must have created him. She asked Olaf to lead them to Elsa so she could bring back Summer. Olaf loved the idea of Summer and happily led them to Elsa's palace. Inside, Anna told Elsa about the terrible winter storm in Arendelle. It's okay. You can just unfreeze it, she said. But Elsa didn't know how to stop the snow. Frustrated, she cried out, I can't! An icy blast shot across the room and hit Anna in the heart. Kristoff rushed to help Anna. I think we should go, he said. At the base of the mountain, Kristoff noticed that Anna's hair was turning white. He knew his friends, the trolls, could help. Grand Pabby saw at once that Anna was hurt. There is ice in your heart, but there by your sister, he said. If not removed, to solid ice you will freeze forever. Grand Pabby explained that only an act of true love could thaw a frozen heart. 
Anna knew Hans was her true love. Maybe a kiss from him would save her. Anna, Kristoff, Sven, and Olaf raced back to Arendelle to find him. But Hans was not in Arendelle. He had set out to look for Anna when her horse returned without her. Hans and the search party arrived at Elsa's palace. The men attacked Elsa, and she defended herself. Suddenly, one of the men aimed a crossbow at Elsa. Hans pushed it aside, and the bolt hit a chandelier. It crashed to the ground, knocking Elsa out. Hans and his men took her back to Arendelle and locked her in the dungeon. Outside the kingdom, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven hurried down the mountainside. Anna was getting weaker by the minute, and Kristoff was worried about her. At the castle gates, he passed her to the royal servants. He knew starting, he was starting to realize that he cared deeply for Anna. But he knew that her true love, Hans, could make her well again. Anna found Hans in the library. She asked him to save her life with a kiss, but he refused. Hans had only been pretending to love Anna so that he could take over Arendelle. Putting out the room's fire, he left Anna to freeze. In the dungeon, all Elsa could think about was getting away from Arendelle. It was the only way to protect everyone from her powers. Elsa became so upset that she froze the whole dungeon and escaped. Alone in the library, Anna could only dwell on her mistakes in trying to find love. Had she doomed herself and her sister? Just when Anna had given up all hope, Olaf arrived. The snowman lit a fire, even though Anna worried that he might melt. Some people are worth melt welting for, he said. Olaf looked out the window and saw Kristoff returning. The snowman realized that Kristoff was the true love who could save Anna. Olaf helped Anna outside where she spotted Kristoff across the frozen fjord. If she could reach him in time, she would be saved. But then she saw someone else. Hans was about to strike Elsa with a sword. Using her remaining strength, Anna threw herself in front of Elsa. Hans' sword came down just as Anna's body froze in solid ice. Elsa wrapped her arms around her frozen sister. Oh, Anna, she sobbed. Then something amazing happened. Anna began to thaw. An act of true love will thaw a frozen heart. Olaf said. Anna's love for Elsa had saved them both. Love, Elsa cried, looking at Anna. That's it. Elsa realized that the key, love, was the key to her magic. She reversed the winter and brought back summer. Hans was astonished to see Anna alive. Anna, he said, but, but she froze your heart. The only frozen heart around here is yours, Anna said, and sent him reeling with one punch. With summer restored, Arendelle returned to normal. But from then on, the castle gates were open for good. For the first time in a long while, Arendelle was a happy place again. The Queen Elsa and Princess Anna were the happiest of all, for they had found their way back to each other. All right, we'll do one more. Family matters. As Olaf walked through the castle, he noticed a portrait of Queen Elsa and her sister, Princess Anna. The painting made him happy because he liked the sisters so much. Just then, Olaf heard Elsa's voice. Maybe the ballroom, she said. Oh, the ballroom's too big, Anna replied. How about the courtyard? Olaf stared at the image in awe. <gasps> wow! This painting is so realistic, he exclaimed. The courtyard doesn't seem right either, Elsa continued. Suddenly, Olaf realized that the voices weren't coming from the portrait, but from the study at the end of the hall. What are you doing, he asked. We're planning a party, Elsa explained. <gasps> I love parties, Olaf exclaimed. At that moment, Jurid and Kai entered the room. 
Good morning, Ger Gerda, Gerda, sorry, Gerda said. I've got some new flowers for you. And I have your hot chocolate, Kai chimed in. Anna quickly pulled Olaf aside. It's a surprise party, she whispered, so you have to keep it a secret. <gasps> I love secrets, whispered Olaf as Kai and Gerda left the room. Elsa had an idea. Olaf, would you like to gather supplies for the party? The little snowman's eyes lit up. Oh, <gasps> really? Elsa handed him a list. Ooh, said Olaf. These must be secret ingredients. You can count on me. And <laughs> Before the sisters could read the list to him, Olaf raced outside and bumped right into Kristoff. Hi, Olaf said. I'm helping with the surprise party. Kristoff grinned. Uh, you mean the one for... Oh, but Olaf shushed Kristoff. Even my list is a secret. Really? Asked Kristoff. Yes. So secret, I don't even know what it says. See? Kristoff laughed. That's because you can't read, he said. Let me help. Kristoff read the list to Olaf and Sven, and in no time, the snowman and the reindeer were off to find the supplies. The first item was goat cheese. When Olaf and Sven pulled up to the Anderson family goat farm, Marty and Gorin welcomed them warmly. Gorin looked at Olaf's list. A party, eh? Our cheese wheels are a perfect party snack. Ah, uh, what are cheese wheels? Olaf asked. It's how we store cheese, explained Gorin. We tried rectangles, but it was a disaster. Some of the Anderson kids helped load the cheese onto the wagon. Olaf and Sven thanked them and handed, headed to their next stop, the Miller Family Flour Mill. <clears throat> when the wagon halted in front of the windmill, a young girl greeted them. Hi, she said. I'm Nora. Hi. I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs, Olaf said. Nora was happy to give him one. Is your windmill haunted? Olaf asked when he saw a shadowy figure. <laughs> no, that's no ghost, Nora laughed. That's Uncle Lassie. He just covered in flour. Flour isn't just in our family, Nora explained. It's on our clothes, too. Olaf showed them his list. Uncle Lassie quickly fetched a few sacks of flour and put them in the wagon. Oh, your party sounds like fun, he said. And there's plenty of flour to bake a cake big enough to feed the entire castle. Well, I didn't know castles could eat, Olaf said, waving goodbye. Olaf and Sven had one last item to get flowers from the nursery run by two sisters, Violet and Vita. Olaf shows the sisters his list, and Violet quickly rolled up a wheelbarrow full of different flowers. This garden's been in my family for generations, said Violet. You're a family too? asked Olaf. Do you have goats or ghosts? Vita smiled. Families are like snowflakes. You mean, they're hard to catch on your tongue? Olaf interrupted. Oh, <laughs> no, no two are exactly alike, Vita said. When the snow returned to the castle, the snowman returned to the castle, he greeted Anna and Elsa and Kristoff. He was greeted by Anna, Elsa, and Kristoff. We have all the ingredients, said Olaf. Great work, Olaf, Anna said. Then she began pulling the petals off the flowers. Kristoff carried the flower toward the castle, and Elsa whisked away a plateful of cheese wheels. See you at the party, Olaf, she said. Oh, don't forget, it's in the library. But when Olaf arrived at the library, he saw only Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, and Sven. Where's everybody else? he asked. This party is for our family, Elsa said, and the guests of honor are about to arrive. At that moment, Gerda and Kai entered. Anna and Elsa threw the colorful flower petals into the air and shouted, Surprise! Gerda and Kai were speechless. 
You've been family to us ever since I can remember, Elsa said with a smile. We wanted to say thank you. You did all of this for us? Gerda asked. Elsa said, well, we wanted to do something nice for you. Kai looked into his cup, which was filled with delicious, delicious frozen chocolate. Oh, I can tell you made it, he said. We added a little vinegar and salt to the flour Olaf brought us, and Anna and I used to... Oh, we added a little vinegar and salt to the flour Olaf brought us, and Anna and I used it to polish all the brass and copper in the kitchen, said Kristoff. Olaf turned to Anna. And you made the flowers into colorful snow! Yeah, Anna said. It's called confetti. Hmm... So what is the cheese for? To eat, of course, said Kai as he took a big bite. It's my favorite. Well, this is a different kind of party, said Olaf. Anna chuckled. Well, we're a different kind of family. Yeah, different, said Olaf. Just like everyone else. All right. Good night. I love you.